Somalia, Pakistan, and Iraq, their females are not even allowed to reach the level of professorship. Based on aspects of religion, their females are not out. Anytime they go out, they must cover their homes up. So the house, this started as a norm. This started as a new thing in the society. Second, it trended in the sense that people now took it as a normal thing. And third, it, got to this, it has got to a tipping point where the voices of women should be heard. And that's why my team and I are advocating that the best way to handle this problem is by denying this country foreign aid. And we're going to base this beliefs on this following levels of analysis. First, on my first level of analysis, I'm going to give you the principle of revolution and principle of necessity. The house, we believe that based on the principle of revolution, that it states that force is the best option to any solution if we've tried every other every other sector to settle a problem. The house, in terms of this principle of revolution, we revolution, we see that these women in this society have been denied. And the house Countries, developing countries, are countries who have failed to reason with the world, right? So there are major other policies that have been tried to be implemented in these developing countries. So that's process policies, ranking in education, ranking in climatic government, that World Health Organizations, United Nations, have tried implementing in this society. The house, these so developing countries failed to follow their steps. So what were the punishments they were given? They were given punishments as such as they will not engage in Olympics, they will not engage in things that evolve the world. The house, this the house, this never solved the problem. So the house, it means that if we should use baby steps to follow these developing countries based on gender equality rights, it will not work. So the house, we said proposition are proposing one thing. We're proposing that let us use force in fighting this thing based on the fact of this foreign aid, they need it, they need it, they, this foreign aid, they need it. So the house, the question is how necessary is this? We term this as 100% no, necessary I, I, since other forms of dealing with this problem, such as Stopping these people from engaging in war things, stopping these people from engaging in the Olympics and other forms of punishment has not worked and has failed us. So definitely, we start proposition are saying that yes, let us try the method of force and simply deny these developing countries foreign aids. Yes, my habit. In trying to solve a particular problem, should we risk the lives of millions who to be suffer if the house? I understand where my, where my friend Admet is getting to. And to this, we have two major responses. First, for going to, this will lead me to my first level of analysis, which is the principle of sacrifice. In this, we believe that the right of an individual should be stepped on or should be suffered upon for the benefit of others. So, the house, who are these people that rights are stepped on? First, the men. Second, the female. In this modern gender, modern generation in developing countries. We believe that their rights should be stepped upon based on getting foreign aids for war, for major body organizations they, they belong to, based for, for major body organizations they belong to, based on the fact that if the rights are stepped on, upon for a period of six months or a period of six weeks to, until these policies are implemented, the house, we are actually seeing millions and thousands and billions of unborn children benefiting from the sacrifice they made. So the house, we term it also necessary that based on the principle of sacrifice that these individuals, yes, the right should be stepped upon for the benefit of millions and billions of girl child, of men child, who are going to be seen coming from this developing countries. And to this, we side provision are standing strong in proposing to this argument. The house, a major question comes up. The question is that the house, how legitimate is us for us, for we to take this action? What right does the United Organizations, what right do they have to implement this? What right does the World Health Organization have to implement this? What right does the African Union have to implement this? The house, it's very simple. For the fact, developing countries such as Somalia, such as Pakistan, belong to, belong to, other major bodies, such as the World Health Organization, such as the African Union, we believe this body as a whole, we believe this body as 60 countries, 70 countries, have the right to try to correct that border by denying him some foreign aid, another for the benefit of all. The House, we have a question and we have a stance. The House, based on the POI my side opposition gave me, I've answered this. Now to my second response, we ask this question. What benefit is of what benefit of foreign aid is to developing countries when it's actually used by the male only? The house, this proves two things. First, it's impartial to the female world. Second, it's causing chaos in this society. The house, if based foreign aid in terms of security, food, and economy are given to these developing countries, using Somalia as a point of contest, using Nigeria as a point of contest, we see the male having the highest share. Based in terms of education, these females are not allowed to reach the level of professorship. Based in terms of based in terms of security, these women are not even really employed. Based in terms of religion, these women are forced to dress like slaves outside the streets of covering themselves. So the house, we ask a question and we let and we, we want an answer from the side opposition that already the foreign aids given to these developing countries are only used by the mode. So we ask you, 
of what benefit is it to a nation? Because already from what I've said, we can clearly see that these foreign aids are actually used by the most in today's society. So how, what was I as a speaker able to bring to you in today's debate? First, I told you the nature of developing countries. Second, I posed to you a problem with the status quo. And in this problem, I told you the problems of gender inequality was seen in this and was seen in these developed countries. Second, I told you how using other forms of punishment in solving the problem of gender inequality would work, such as banning these people from Olympiad games, such as banning these people from engaging in medicines in the world. The world, the world, major organizations have tried to use it and it didn't work. So the house, we start provision, please enforce. Second, I got to the principle of sacrifice based on the question that they asked me. And second, I was able to throw a major question to them that of what benefit is the use of foreign aid to a society when it's only used by the male only. So I could bring you the spirit of the point of legitimacy. Why we start provision, please 100% legitimate for these developed countries to be denied the foreign aid. So with this, with this, Sir Michael's remain humble and proud enough to propose this motion. Thank you. That was the lead speaker from Team Top Position. And I'll clap on it. Thank you for the length of time you made yourself. The lead speaker from the side proposition spent six minutes, 26 seconds. By name, Sokotas. He said, and I quote, The best way to change a society is for you to find little change in it and make it to promote it and to give outstanding reasons why you do it. Which is, I call upon the least speaker from the opposition to an open case of opposition. The House, we the same opposition in today's debate, do not deny the fact that women are being discriminated in these countries. What we propose in today's debate is the legitimacy of this act, the morality of this act, the workability of this act, and then we present an alternative to the Honorable House that will solve the problem of gender inequality in those countries. Ladies and gentlemen, before I move into my substantive argument, I, as the least speaker, we can only for my team and also give the principal justifications why we are in opposition of this motion. My first supporting speaker, we extend the case of my team. Why my second supporting speaker? We refute assertions coming from side proposition and also reaffirm the stand of my team in today's debate. Ladies and gentlemen, this side proposition brought up four arguments in today's debate the issue of revolution, the issue of sacrifice, the rights of this international organization, and finally, the, the benefits of this foreign aid. Ladies and gentlemen, on the issue of revolution, where they told us that we should use force. Let them not forget that most of these countries that are international are sovereign countries. They have the right to do whatever they want in society. Now, you cannot stop a country like USA, a country like Russia and the rest of them when they want to give a country a foreign aid. So, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that you cannot force these countries. It's against the international law. And for that reason, we believe that that argument falls for them in today's debate. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that with the use of diplomacy, we can convince these countries, we can set this right in this nation. They are have, on the issue of sacrifice, ladies and gentlemen, we have two solid responses. First, we believe that stepping on the rights of members of the society, when you have another alternative which we will present to the Honorable House to solve a problem, we believe that that problem is counterproductive, we believe that it's not justified when you can solve a problem without stepping on rights of individual society, and still you maintain to step on rights of people in the society. Again, we have to have the point of argument that this, since these people, this, since these developing countries are members of this international organization, that they can be denied this foreign. Ladies and gentlemen, note you that these countries never bargained for these things when they were entering those international organizations. It was never in those charters when they entered there. The third charter said that they will be giving foreign aid. So denying them that at this particular point in time means that they are going against an agreement, an international agreement at that. Again, we have the important argument. What is the benefit of this foreign aid if it is still for men only? Ladies and gentlemen, we this proposition are going to give you an alternative, which will bring up these women to the limelight and then that is something uh, this foreign aid to also benefit them in society. No, no, no. Coming to our arguments, we believe we first of all question the legitimacy of this act. Think about it. We believe that every country has its sovereignty. I have the right to give to whatever country I want foreign aid. Maybe I want to benefit something from that country. Now, trying to tell me not to give them foreign aid, we believe that that is unjustified in today's debate. It is going against my sovereignty, and that is what we decide to proposition against in today's debate. Now, what gives them, what gives that proposition the right to dictate what happens in every sovereign country in the nation? We believe that that is against the international law. They have, coming to the question of morality of this action, we believe that most of these countries will still resist. Now, think about Islamic countries. They would rather die than remove one thing from their plan. Ladies and gentlemen, now, if we try to 
force these countries with belief that they will still resist it and they will not be part of the of this motion. Now, now do how when we do not give them this foreign aid and they are resisting what we want, we believe that the children there will suffer. Think about the poverty rate. Ladies and gentlemen, think about the people that are dying in those communities. Ladies and gentlemen, think about all these things. You see that these countries will still resist it. And if they resist it, think about these things. Ladies and gentlemen, placing the principle of utilitarianism, we believe we say that the most moral action is that we favor the most people over a long period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, we that it's unjustified for this motion to stand. Don't be wrong. Think about it. We believe that most of these countries that are even developed, most of them still discriminate against women. Think about countries like United Arab Emirates. Think about countries like Russia. Think about countries like Saudi Arabia. Now, think about the organization of Islamic countries. These organizations are still discriminating against women based on the fact of religion and the rest of them. Now, if you are discriminating against women in society, and then you are forcing other countries not to discriminate against women in society, what justifies that action? They have, coming to the workability of this motion, this gentlemen, we believe that every country is a sovereign nation. And you cannot force these individuals on the USA to do what they do not want to decide. Now, if countries like USA wants to get raw materials from Nigeria and want to give them foreign aid in order to, uh, uh, in order to make the agreement solid, what, that, what justifies you from coming into that action? Ladies and gentlemen, you believe that this, you believe that this motion has no justification. Now, do you have who will enforce this motion? You believe that every country is a sovereign country. Who will enforce the motion? Now, do you have which organization will be a party for it? Even the United Nations organization does not have the right over all the countries of the world. Because we believe that not all the countries of the world are a party to the United Nations organization. So we believe that this motion is a total trash. It cannot work in today's world. Don't ever have. Think about even people that may form organizations to be able to destroy what is happening. No, think about the organization of Islamic nations. They will still form this organization and still give foreign aid to people they want to society. So we believe that this motion is unjustified. Now think about the masculinist group. The masculinist group in society will still help these countries to do what they want in society. So we believe that these things are just working against the enforcement of this policy in today's period. And we believe that it is nowhere workable. Are moved by ideology. Think about the Islamic nations. They will never remove one thing from their Quran. And if whatever you do, they will still resist whatever you are doing in society. Now, think about the number of people that will die in those countries if those things are resisted. Think about the number of people, children that will suffer. Think about people that will die of hunger. Listen, and gentlemen, these are the things we decide the position. Our tribes fight against it today's space. We do not stand for the maltreatment of the majority. We do not stand for the maltreatment of people in society in as much as we fight for the minority. We do not stand for the for the discrimination, and then we do not stand for the demonization of the majority in society. Now, what arguments, what alternative do we bring to the honorable house? Ladies and gentlemen, in this debate, we give you the alternative of diplomacy. Now, how do we think this will work in society? Think about the United Nations Women Wing International and other international groups. Now, these organizations can go into those countries and start empowering women in those countries. They can go into those countries and then start forming feminist groups that will fight for their rights in those countries. Think about it. These are the ways that countries like USA made it, and then women and men had to work rights in society. These are ways that countries, many countries that are now having a way between men and women in society, these are the ways they made it. Now, this way, you do not you do not damage the right of any member of society. In this way, you do not do any things that are against the rights of individuals in society. In this way, you do not, in this way, you do not humanize people. This is diplomacy at its at its as it be. Now, we have think about giving these countries incentives. Now, a country or the international body can then come and tell these people that we are going to give you this if you do this. Now, what if we reduce the tariff, tariff that is being given to this country when they import from other countries? We believe that this is a very nice incentive that can make this country to even bow down to whatever we want them to do in society. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that this are the things. Now, if we use diplomacy, first of all, we change the ideologies of these people in society, and then we can help to do whatever we want in society. This is the power of diplomacy at work and not the power of force. With this, I propose this motion. Thank you. That was the speaker from Zoom opposition. And I'm not going to take my thoughts that I'll make you so. The least speaker from the side opposition spoke for six minutes, ten seconds. Do not be afraid to create something new. Think of the amateurs who be the Titanic and the professionals who be the ark. With this, I call upon the first participant from the team proposition to an extend the case of proposition. What is the 
made for foreign aids. When if these foreign aids are being given to these developing countries, only one gender benefits from it. The house. The house. The motion before us has actually placed the burden on both things. And we believe that the main aim of team proposition in today's debate is to give a justification why we believe that these developing countries, their foreign aid should be denied. The general house, as the first one to speak of the team proposition, will write to refuse the wrong decisions coming from the board of opposition and then reaffirm the stand of my team. First, the list of from the team opposition came up to talk about this right of this people being stepped on. But generals, to this we have four responses. First, we believe that through our list we can be able to show you the nature of these people. Whereby these people are people who actually depend solely on these foreign aids. And we believe that denying them foreign aids is actually the pain point. Thereby saying that denying them these foreign aids, we tend to see that it affects them rapidly and therefore if they come about, they turn back, they go back, they not for these foreign aids. Also, talking about the principle of sacrifice, we talked to, our list was able to tell you about the principle of sacrifice, whereby he thought that he thought that sacrificing the one's right is enough to save the other's right. Others' right. Generals, based on this, we believe that sacrificing most of these citizens' rights in these developing countries is actually a way forward in saving the rights of other countries. The generals, based on what the list told us about, based on what the list told us about denying these people foreign aid is not actually it's not trying to solution to the problem. We tend to see that team opposition in today's debate are siding these developing countries who do not work towards gender equality. In today's debate, we believe that this house stands at the parliament. This house stands at this United, United Nations organization who actually give out foreign aid, foreign aid to these developing countries. We tend to see that them siding them siding these developing countries today is actually telling us that gender inequality, gender inequality should keep on going higher in our country. Me. Yes, ma'am. What would justify you to step on the rights of members of society where you can still do things without stepping on their rights? General House, bringing up all this principle of sacrifice, we believe that it entirely covers the, the rights of everyone. Talking about the infringement of other people's rights is actually based on the end of this principle of sacrifice that one's rights can actually be sacrificed to save other people's rights. General House, not to align with arguments. How do we actually know these countries that do not work towards gender equality? Generals, we talk about, we brought up the issue about gender equality index. This is actually a, a platform whereby, whereby countries are being monitored to know how other, other, other sets and genders actually participate in international activities like, like sports, which includes World Cup, the Olympic sports. Generals, we believe that through this, in, through this index, a lot of people, a lot of countries, through this index, countries who do not want towards gender equality have been found out. Countries like Somalia, countries like Pakistan, these countries do not allow their females to participate in international activities, just like I've already told you about the sports and the education. The generals, on my first substantive, I'm going to base my argument on the social contract theory. This is actually an agreement between the ruled and the rulers, concerning each duties and rights of each each of them to comply with these already laid down rules. The generals, this theory is also based on two major models. First, we talk about the budget model choosers. The generals, based on this motion, we believe that the model choosers are these parliamentaries, the United Nations Organization, the African Union, the Euro European Union, who actually are the ones giving out this foreign aid to these developing countries. Generals, we believe that. Denying them this foreign aid is actually a step in order to make them enforce laws that will actually put gender inequality in line. The yeah. generals, we, we believe that the rule, we believe that these model choosers are being put in a position to take to make rights that will actually govern the real individuals who are the second major models in today's debate. The real individuals, based on this motion, are these individual developing countries like. Pakistan and Somalia, which we told you that they do not allow their females to participate in international activities, which includes the sports, education, politics, and so on. General, so we believe that denying these people foreign aid is actually the best solution in order to make them to begin, in order to make them to begin to put all gender in the same equality. General, talking about also general, talking about the principle of efficacy. How do we, why do we think that this is actually efficient to deny these people's their foreign aid? General, just like I've already told you, the, these foreign aids are actually the pain points of these developing countries. In the sense that these developing, co these developing countries depend solely on these foreign aids. And without the foreign aid, we tend to see that they can't live. They can't live. 
And so we believe that in order to make them abide by the rules which are governing these parliamentaries like average state and United Nations and so on, we believe that the law which actually guides them concerning gender equality, that denying them this foreign aid will actually make them to enforce laws, to implement laws that will actually put this, put this gender equality in line. Generals, just like our little told you about the principle of sacrifice, and just that I've already reduced it to, to refute the wrong decision made by my friends in argument, we believe that this principle of sacrifice actually serves the place in today's debate in the sense that sacrificing one's right to save, in the sense that sacrificing one's right to save other people's rights is actually a good step, and we believe that denying these people their foreign aid, should, denying these people their foreign aid is the best solution in order to make them to bring in gender equality. Generals also, we talked about, generals also, talking about our best and worst case scenario, we tend to see that in our best case scenario, these people, these people, after being denied their foreign aid, they go, they go back to enforce laws, they go back to implement policies that will actually put this gender equality in line, and therefore, they might, and, they, and after, they will come back begging these parliamentaries for the foreign aid which was denied. Generals, based on our worst case scenario, we tend to see that these people, based on our worst case scenario, we tend to see that denying these people their foreign aid is denying, them, denying these people their foreign aid is, all, is also is our worst case scenario. And we believe that both our worst case and both our worst case and best case scenarios also drive to the point of aiming, also drive to the point of achieving our aim in today's debate. So the generals, what have I been able to bring to you in today's debate? I brought to you points based on the social context. Social contract theory, in the sense that these model choosers, who are the parliamentary, the United Nations organizations, and so on, have the right to implement rules that go that govern these great individuals. These great indi individuals, which I made, 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 made known to you, are these individual developing countries. I also brought to you points based on efficacy. Why we think that it is efficient that this, that denying them foreign aid is actually the best way to push in this gender equality. We showed you reasons why this. We showed you reasons why we showed you reasons why denying them foreign aid is actually is actually efficient. In 2015, it was actually made known that there was a there was a climate change bill which actually made some countries not there was a climate change bill in which some countries refused to refused to sign. But the generals, when these countries when they were denied foreign aid, we tend to see that they came back running back to this parliament in order for them to get back to foreign aid. An example, as we all know, is our beloved nation, Nigeria. So the generals would believe that proposing this motion and telling you that denying them foreign aid is actually the best solution to this debate. And so let the motion stand. Thank you. That was what participant from the two people position. And now for the part because length of time he made use of. First of all, this speaker from the side proposition spent eight minutes twenty four seconds. The court is not afraid of the door because family reality covers all things. With this, I say, I now call upon the first officer from Team Corporation to open the case of opposition. Mr. Chair, we did not deny the fact that is gender inequality in our country. What we question today is the capability of nine developing countries foreign trade to solve the problem of gender inequality existing in status quo. We question the morality of their action and also question the legitimacy of that action. Mr. Chair, before I go into this pro debate proper, I would like to report all our sessions from precise the position, proposition in the course of their speech. They come up two principles, which is the main argument they came up with, the principle of revolution and the principle of sacrifice. But to that, we have four solid principles. Mr. Chair, we believe the principle of consequentialism, which says that the, that the end of that the end justifies this. Now we believe that the end of this policy will end up in bloodshed. Many countries, to number the international relationship, and many countries, and we see many majority of the population dying in today's debate. Mr. Chair, we believe that if we legalize this policy, that the end will be able, and for that, the, the policy is not justified. Again, I have a small response to that. We believe in the sacrosanctity of human life, that small life is sacrosanct, and for that reason, we see no reason why we should trample on the li right to life of citizens in order to achieve our aim. Whereas we can achieve it diplomatically. Again, our third response is that we believe in the social contract theory, where it is stated that the function of the government protects the life and property of the citizens. Now, believe that when we do this by
by, by denying this form of right to life, you are going against the shock of that theory, and then you are infringing on the fundamental human right. But remember, the function of the government to protect the fundamental human rights of citizens in the country. Now, on our first response to that, we believe that even these developed countries still de de depend on, on developed countries to survive. Now, think of country, think of America and Nigeria. Now, America depends on Nigeria for food oil, whereas Nigeria depends on America for technologies. Now, we believe that when we stop this foreign exchange, it is going to hamper international relations, and we see that it's not even workable. It's this speed. Now, the government's the point of information. They know that what is, what is the need of giving these people for aid? Well, as because, well, as, where is the most important gender? So, so, that we have to solve the response. So, so, we believe that we do not see the relevance of that question to this debate, whereas we can, where we can achieve it diplomatically without infringing on the fundamental rights of this city. Now, we believe that they've already told us that they have denied Olympics, they have denied sports, and other things. Yet, you see the denied politics, right in our society. That is to say that even if we deny Olympics, that problem will still continue to exist in the society. Yeah. You earlier spoke on the idea of that deed that going by our world is denying people their rights. But don't you think that these developing countries are first denying women their rights to freedom of, of education, address the general house? Mr. Chair, only you told me that these developing countries are not, that these developing countries are still. Think of countries like the Islamic countries that are still practicing the Nile policy. We believe that the Nile is for foreign trade will not even solve the problem. Now, think of organizations like Organization of Islamic Countries. Now, we believe that even if the Nile is for foreign trade, they will form another organization and still give them to themselves. We believe that that problem cannot be solved by an authority. That is what we call a problem solution. It's smart. Now, my first supporting speaker, my Please, Speaker, give you the morality why you oppose this debate, why you told you that the principle of consequentialism contradicts the side opposition for making this policy. Now, we believe that it's not going to be workable because we believe in a society of human life, where human life is of paramount importance for any responsible government existing in the country. Now, we gave you a economic implication of what is going to happen if we do this. Now, we gave you the instance of Nigeria and, and America, where we told you that if we do this, you see that we have an international relationship and we see a lot of life die in our society. Now, Mr. Chef, you gave me the legal justification of why you broke, opposed this motion. Now, we gave you the sovereignty of these countries. Why we told you that you cannot stop countries like PSA from giving foreign trade because they have the sovereignty over everything they, they are doing in the country. Now, we gave them many questions. We are still yet to answer this debate. We asked them who are the people that are going to enforce this law and who are the people that are going to enforce this law over the United Nations. We believe that even these United Nations do not practice the United now, we believe that these people are the world powers, and we see the, the, we see the irrevocability of bringing up this authority into this space. I can remember how we told you that these people, that, that these world powers even, even practice gender in policy. And we see that if we do this, it's not going to be workable in this debate. Now, we gave you the instance that even this, that it is not workable, that, if, that these developing countries can even form organization and give help to themselves. Mr. Chair, we believe that these European countries can easily form organization. Now think of the organization of Islamic countries that can even form organization and then give it to themselves. Mr. Chair, the world of cyber division is a horrible world to be, a world where we encourage war, a world where we encourage destruction in international relationship, a world of hunger, a world of salvation, but we offer you a world of diplomacy where we can do things without infringing on fundamental human rights of citizens, where we can do things diplomatically and where we can have peace and progress in society. We see the world of side opposition. It's a horrible world for human life to exist. Mr. Chair, we already told you that these people are driven by ideologies, and we cannot change their ideology by force. We can only change their ideologies by giving these people diplomatic policies and then bringing, bringing people that can empower women in these societies. And then we believe that by doing this, that we help to solve this problem of gender inequality in the society. With this, I probably hope. I was going to start from the opposition. And I'm going to thank you for the length of time he made use of. First opposing speaker from the side opposition spoke for four minutes, 19 seconds. When two elephant fights, the bus suffers. I can sense there's a fire on the mountain. To your house, I don't know if I should run if I should stay. But as a moderator, I stood my ground. I know not for you people, the general house, if you are going to stay with me or if you are going to run. With this, I call upon the Sakos Fotisuka Committee proposition to extend the case of proposition.
panel. We believe side proposition raised a major, a major um, question and our stance in today's debate, which side opposition has failed to answer. And we believe any, way, any answer coming from the world of side opposition is already, is already deemed too late in today's debate. First, we ask to our first opposition speaker, what is, the, what is the use of this foreign aid? When this foreign aid had been given to the developing countries and only one gender benefit, benefit from it, and to now side proposition has failed to bring up any reasonable answer to that question. And with this, side proposition already has been in today's debate. We believe the general house that side opposition has already shown us how messy and how irrelevant all their points could be in this debate. They kept on bringing up points based on human and the rights of these individuals and the, and the idea of diplomacy. But the general has to this, we're going to show you how that point holds the water in today's debate. Starting from the lead speaker, he comes up stating the argument of the, that um, the countries already have international agreements. Well, we believe that um, giving foreign aid is part of the international agreement. The general house, we believe that that is not an international agreement. That is a fallacy coming from the world of side opposition. He failed to understand the motion. This motion states that this house will deny developing countries foreign aid. They will blind developing countries who fail to work towards gender equality foreign aid. First, for the general house, these foreign aids are being given by countries who feel that they want to do. The first class countries, the World and Trade Union, the, um, the European Union, the African Union, and the rest of them. And we believe who are these developing countries. These are countries that are still in the developing stage. These are countries that can't stand on their own. These are countries that can't do with the help they get from this foreign aid, which of course side opposition has failed to understand. He also brought up the idea of um, these international agreements, and to this, we have two responses. First, we believe that even if this, um, this agreement is international, gender equality is also, is also something international. And based on our first speaker, we brought up the idea of the social contract theory. He made you understand the social contract theory, whereby he said that there is social Social contract theory has two models. First, the first model is that the rule has the right to make laws for the rulers. And the second model is that the rulers are bound to obey by the issues. And who are the stakeholders in this social contract theory? First, the first, um, the first stakeholders are the United Union, the World Trade Organization, who are bound to make rules for the people who are developing through their foreign aid that they must foster towards gender equality. And who are the second stakeholders? These are the developing countries who are bound to go by the issue. So we believe that those at that point pose more water in today's debate. Right. Just about the idea of ch children here suffering. General House, we brought up the idea of sacrifice. So we believe that for something to happen, a sacrifice should go in. We believe that this would be enough sacrifice for them to turn back and for them to turn back and sign the bill of the gender equality. This is what side opposition has failed to understand in today's debate. Yes, I have a few. Right. Now, if a major world power, for example, like United States, eventually gives foreign aid to these developing countries, how will they be sanctioned? General House, we believe that they will be sanctioned. Sacred Opp opposition has failed to understand this motion. This, um, the, this foreign aid are being given to developing countries. Now, you don't just sign into a developing country. You are being, a country is being looked at, a country is being scrutinized. And when they find out that these countries can't stand on their own, that their economy can stand on their own, that's when they are being tied, that's when they are being tied to developing countries. And who are those that give this um, help? These are the first class countries, countries that feel that they are what to do, countries can stand on their own. This is what side opposition should first understand before bringing up any points into this argument. He also brought up that we would enforce these rules. And he also focused, he also um, misquoted our, our, he also misquoted our points, which we that. He brought up the argument of that this would, who, who, who are the countries that would implement the um, idea of denying this country foreign aid. But the general we believe that these are things the first class countries who do on their own. They need no one to implement them. We believe that for the act, for the fact that these developing countries generate foreign aid from these first class countries, they are bound to go by the rules of this first class country. And we believe that gender equality is already something versatile, which all countries should fight towards. The science opposition first understand the fact that oh, yeah, if the most of bringing up the idea of rights on the general house, but the general house, when they write up the idea of the principle of authoritarianism, the general house, the science opposition never understood the principle of now, the general house, what is the principle of authoritarianism? It states that anything, what, anything that favors the majority is worth doing, and anything which do not, which do not favor the majority isn't worth doing. Now, the general house, if you, have, if you have a clear look at the two solutions, which side proposition and side opposition is bringing up in this debate, you tend to find out that our, uh, that our solution tends to favor the majority. Remember, we believe that both the male, both the female, both the boy, both the girl, both the man and the woman, both the male and the female in these developing countries tends to enjoy from this family aid. But what we receive from one of side opposition? The they kept up bringing up arguments based on rights and diplomacy, which they couldn't prove. And we have shown you how those arguments we are flawed in today's debate. He also brought up the idea of, he also brought up the, of the idea of this um this developing country forming women movements, which will power um the idea of which will power gender equality in this nation. This is what It's also the same side opposition who made the statement that these Islamic countries are people that are bent on their Quran. The general house, if they are bent on their Quran, who then then the side opposition think that their solution of forming women will, will even work in these Islamic countries. We believe that that's a pure that, that that's a pure solution, problem solution mismatch. But the general house, based on our stand, what could we give you? We brought up arguments, what we believe that 
these problems, that these are solutions, we really solve the problems of gender equality we see in these developing countries. Still, about the point that the first of all, speaker made brought up arguments where he, made, where he said that when he brought up the duel, the end justifies the means. General has believed that that point only already shows that side opposition, not understanding, not understanding the motion, but taking sides to our war. The end justifies the means. What does this mean? The, what, what, what does this theory mean? The general has having a claim that what we brought up, what we brought up today. The end justifies the means. We believe that at the end, what do we start to get? We start to get whereby these developing countries foster um, gender equality, whereby these developing countries know the value of both the male and the female. But what, do, what are the means through which we go this? We, through, through which we get to this, um, through which we get to that point of these developing countries knowing the value of both the men and women, where, where, where we get, where we see these developing countries fostering gender equality. We believe that the means that we, which we get it is denying their foreign aid, which shows you that the theory of the end justifies the means suits for side proposition in today's debate. He also brought up the idea of the rights of citizens, the general powers. First of all, when we ask the, we ask the POI, which side opposition couldn't come down in today's debate, the POI was, they have kept hammering on the rights of the citizens. What are the rights of these women who say freedom to education? Do these developed countries go by these rights? Then why should side opposition keep on hammering on the rights of the citizens? We believe that side opposition hasn't been able to give us any, any pure solution that will solve the problem of gender equality, which shows one thing, security of side opposition over side opposition in today's debate. They also brought up the idea of sovereignty in general house. But to this, we have two responses. First, we believe that this country, the fact they brought up the idea of sovereignty, the general house, we already told you that these countries are developing countries. These countries are countries which can do this foreign aid. We gave you a clear instance that happened in 2015, the, um, the, climate, the climate bill, whereby all the countries in the world were meant to sign this bill. At the instance, Nigerians themselves refused, refused to sign this bill. Other countries refused to sign this bill. What did the World Trade Union do? What did the United Nations do? They denied the foreign aid. And in the total of, the total of an eye, all these countries came back to sign that, to sign that bill. Just to the fact they know what they gave from this foreign aid. So we believe that side proposition has got to give you clear analysis, clear solutions to the problem in hand. Or what is the side proposition? We believe we haven't, we haven't got to, we haven't been able to get any, any, any pure solution to the problem. And based on stakeholders' analysis, what do we give from our world? The general house, it is simple. Side promotion is advocating for gender equality. We advocate for a world whereby the end justifies the means. We advocate for a world whereby the end was the end result, is was the end result favors the, um, the majority. It is what you we foster a world of the principle of individualism, where you choose. But based on Hans' analysis, what do we see? We see a world whereby you bring a solution that will never solve the problem. We see a world whereby they tend to foster gender inequality because we believe that is what side opposition is advocating for. Since the fact they couldn't answer all our points, all our POIs, and all our major stands being, being raised up in today's debate, the general house. We believe that if we really want to have gender equality work in these countries, if we really want these developing countries to work towards gender equality, one thing is sure. We really need one thing that will get them to become married. One thing that will make them coming back, running, begging, not even asking, but begging to, to, to get the foreign aid. And that is simple. Deny them the foreign aid and they tend to foster gender equality. Thank you. The general house, I will be my team and I are proud to propose this motion. Thank you. That was a question from the from the group position. And I'm going to take part of the length of time he made use of. Second supporting figure from the side of the region spoke for seven minutes, nine seconds. When a bear pitches on a goal, neither the bear nor the goal is at first. Because the best way to change an evil society is first find the good, the little good in it. Then use it to promote it. With this, I call upon the support of Sugar from the two opposition to come and extend the case of opposition. This house believes that developing countries who did not work towards gender equality should be denied foreign aid. Honorable House, before you is Antonio Ume, I am the second supporting speaker of the team opposition of today's debate. Honorable House, we believe that yes, our friend and argument have come up here with a lot of plausible arguments, but I will show you how flawed they are in today's debate. Honorable House, first of all, we ask them a lot of positive information in negative questions in today's debate, which they have failed on their own part to answer. First of all, we ask them, in trying to solve a particular problem, should you reach the lives of millions that will suffer if this motion stands? They are yet to give an answer to that. Second, we ask them who will enforce this motion. They told us the world powers enforce this motion. They will us the counter, a counterpoint of information. Now, if this world powers enforce, if this world powers will be the people that will enforce this motion, 
If one of them actually now gives the foreign aid, who will now fund this people's order? You really know that this, this, um, this, their own point, this, their answer to this question is now from this space. Again, I'm going to ask them a third question. What justifies us stepping on the rights of individuals in society if we can use diplomatic means that does not infringe on any rights at all? Then, yes, we have an answer to that. Then, you know house, on our own part, we raise up a lot of arguments which they are yet to come into this space. You know what, let us discuss from our alternative. You know what, let us give you two possible alternatives in this space. First, that we use the system of diplomacy, and second, that we will give these people incentive, that if you do this thing for us, that we will give you incentive. You know what, house, we believe that they try to scratch the first, the first alternative, but the second is still remaining standing to this debate. You know what, house? Then, on the second detail, on the second alternative, which is still standing in today's space, we also believe that when these countries who are poverty stricken, when these countries who are still developing, when these countries who have a lot of poor people in their communities are giving these things on a platter of gold, we also believe that they will have no option to succumb. That instead of waging war in these countries by depriving them of this foreign aid, no matter how big a country like Somalia, which they gave as a critical example in today's space. No matter how small think of it, when Somalia is going to be giving this thing and telling them that they will be from foreign aid, and they eventually refuse, what do you think the organization of internal countries will do? What do you think Saudi Arabia will do? What do you think countries that will support gender inequality like Russia will do? These are the questions they fail to ask Russia. These are the crazy questions they fail to face before they come to the spirit of this motion. They must believe that their own world is going to cause us more problems because in a bit to solve this gender inequality, we see we brought our whole world into a global war. Again, none of us now come to the arguments. None of us believe that the argument can be summarized under two headings, which is possible, but I'll show you how flawed they are. First, none of us, they came up here with the the principle of sacrifice that we have to, that some rights have to be strong pulled upon in order to serve people in society. Now, to that, we have four solid responses. First of all, have read that by stepping on this right, I will solve this problem, I will create more problems. Number one, has already that really told you that we're creating more problems for ourselves because at the end of the day, we see ourselves bringing enmity between countries, bringing these extremists in war with these people who are in support of gender equality. And that will even what lead to further demonization of women because when such a war comes out, who are people of the victims? Obviously. Women. Again, our second, so, um, alternate, um, um, our second reporter to that is the social contact theory, which they declare that it's on their own path. But I'll show you how it lies more on the team opposition. No, because even the duty of the government is to what is to provide for the citizens and to make sure they are very comfortable in society. Are we making our citizens comfortable in society by passing laws which will lead to their suffering? These are the questions they fail to answer before they enter the of this space. In the normal house, they came up here in a bid to resolve the argument. They said that we should give them six months or six weeks of deprivation of these things. They don't have to that that is a mere fallacy on their own part. Because I don't know, after giving us, after giving them these six weeks, they can still resist it. If, if, we, if, if we extend these six weeks, we believe that these international organizations that are against gender equality will still sponsor these companies. And we don't see any opposition coming from any more power because they know what it entails a global war. In the other house, our first response to that is the principle of utilitarianism. What will favor the majority over a longer period of time is what is moral. Are we favoring the majority by killing them? Are we favoring the majority by leaving them to starve in hunger? These are the questions they fail to answer before they enter the spirit of the revolution. In the other house, their second argument is the principle of revolution that we should use force to get what we want to solve whatever that means. Now, my first of all, this speaker really tried to scratch out, which is human standing to this bit, and I have to give a counter argument to that. Now, we have already tried to um, defend these people that will not be engaged themselves in the Olympics. We only deprive them from engaging in the World Cup and the rest of them. But still, these people are still resistant in their ideologies. Now, how shall we that if we deprive them of this foreign aid, they will still succumb? Because they must look at these countries, even these countries even have serious um, supporters behind them. They must look at countries like Somalia, where they use as an example. Look like at Saudi Arabia is solidly behind them. Russia is solidly behind them. Organization of Islamic countries is solidly behind them. No, no, let us look at countries like Nigeria today. We see that the OIC is all solidly behind them. So we look like at this system. Pick a prick from their own skin because what it is not going to work ever in this space. You know, we have developed the issue and fallacy of education that these countries that were going to deprive them of education, you know, has that is a main fallacy and the tales of old. Let us come to global war now. We see that these people have been empowered, schools have been created in these places. Let us go for Cuba, to Cuba, for example. Cuba, many secondary schools for only girls have been produced to make sure that these girls are fully educated. Let us go to our country, Nigeria. We see many girls still sitting with us. This shows that the extent that we have even tried to solve this problem. And there was really that, that point of education. Was flagged down to this state. You know what house? They pass the point of information, put up answer repeatedly, but they refuse to accept our answer. They ask, what benefit is for if it's famous for the girls? You know what So that we told them the alternative of diplomacy and incentive, and the act is still standing.
Freedom House, and all that. We give you a lot of possible arguments which are still standing to this bit. First, the simplicity of human life, which my first person speaker came up here. Talk to this moment that has not been touched. Again, we came up with the issue of international relationship, which has not been touched. He, he, he gave up any with the engagement of sovereignty of one past, that one past have not no, 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 no rest whatsoever to infringe on the rights of sovereign states. That even the one past itself won't have these traces of gender equality in them, and that yet, judging other things, Rome has their gate printed that we did with today's debate. My last speaker came up here with the principle of utilitarianism and tried to show you how moral and justified if we stand to this, to this motion, and they failed to. Counter that argument into this debate. You know, the House reported the issue of legitimacy, legitimacy, what we talked about the sovereignty of these states, and they are still here to counter the argument. You know, the House will talk, ask them a question, how would this have that motion work? And the other House, let us let me point out that they fail to show how this is their, this is their policy work. Because the has said that all these states are sovereign. So, how will you come and tell me that I will not give support to this person because they failed to get gender equality in their state? If I refuse, will you come and fight me? Will you come and inherit my land? These are the questions they fail to answer. They fail to give us the how this is their motion will work in our society. No, perhaps. Now, which word are we giving to this space? No, perhaps we give you a word of gender equality, a word of peaceful coexistence, a word of diplomacy. What we can use diplomatic means and humane means to get what we want. But I give you a word of terror, a word of terrorism, a word whereby people will be up pointing arms at each other and fighting and global war. And this is what we, the team of the Chinese, do. With this, we believe that this motion should fall. Thank you. That was so awesome to speak up from the opposition. And I'm going to take what the length of time he made use of. The second support speaker from the side of the spent 6 minutes 31 seconds. A quote by a great philosopher, Pythagoras, he said, and I quote, Do not what you, do what you want to do. For this, it to counter your argument. With this, I call upon the side opposition to give us the reply speech. The House, the motion for today's debate placed a burden upon, upon both teams for side opposition to prove how this foreign aid will have to solve the problem of gender inequality. This they failed on their own part. Now, we were able to prove to you that this foreign aid won't solve the problem of gender inequality, rather, it will escalate matters in society. And furthermore, we gave you an alternative that will help to solve this problem of gender inequality in society, which side of the proposition is yet to attack in today's debate. But anyway, we are going to take them at their best. Ladies and gentlemen, we asked them a lot of mind-blowing questions, expecting logical answers, but they ended up giving us nothing. So we asked them, what is the justification of infringing on rights of human beings in society when we can do things the other way around and achieve things without infringing on rights? Ladies and gentlemen, that question is still standing till now in today's debate. And I think any further attempt to address that question is proven now and void. Again, now you have, we asked them, if countries like America and other countries we know that our world powers and so giving these foreign aid to these countries. Now, how, how are we going to sanction them? This gentlemen, they ended up telling us that we are not going to sanction them, which goes a long way to show you that laws without punishment are not laws. That opposition proposition is still confused in today's debate. Furthermore, they try to put words into our mouth when they say that we say that these countries are sick and they are religious, they can't accept these things in society. But this gentlemen, it's obvious that they are not fully a right of line of argument. What we told them is that these countries cannot be forced into the need. Think about the Islamic religions and rest of them. They cannot be forced, they would rather die than do it. But we also told you the power of diplomacy. We will tell you that with using diplomacy, we can use incentives and get them to do things we want in our society. This goes on to show you that side proposition is yet still confused in today's debate. Now, they ask us a point of information. What is the benefit of giving foreign aid when it benefits only the men? These are gentlemen, we answer these points of information three times in today's debate, yet they are deaf to our argument. We told them that when we give these women this, when we use our authority to help these men empower them in society, and they come up with standard. We may have this foreign aid, we then start to reach them and other men in society. These are gentlemen, they we say these things. Many times in today's debate, yet they are yet to understand that that their point of information has already been tackled. They have, they brought up the arguments in today's debate, the issue of revolution, where they brought up the issue of force. And we told them that countries that are giving this, this foreign aid have sovereignty. You have to do whatever you want in society. After countries can do what they want, you have no right to tell a country, a sovereign country, to do what you want in society. Again, we have, we give them the alternative of diplomacy, which they are yet an incentive, which they are yet to act argue in today's way. Again, we have the bottom of the issue of sacrifice. They will ask them one question. What is the benefit of stepping on rights of individuals in society? Whereas we can do this without being this.
with that statement on their right, this statement, they are yet to engage us on that argument. But about the other house, we tell them, if these countries resist, and then they do not do what they, they, we want them to do in society, I will end up not giving them the foreign aid. We told them how even those women will suffer in society. This statement, they are yet to engage us on that argument. They have, what about our own part? On our own part, we are able to prove our body in today's way. We gave you the issue of legitimacy. How legitimate it is to this motion is in today's day. Again, we gave, we gave you the, that this motion is not morally justified in today's day. Now we have, we told you how unworkable this policy is because they have already denied Olympic, they have already, already denied everything, and they still want, they want to deny for the All these things have not been working in society, and they will still not work in society. And now we have, we presented to you an alternative which to today, side opposition have not yet attempted to scratch. And with this, we believe that side opposition have an upper hand in today's day. Thank you. That was the life from Team Opposition. And I'm going to thank for all the letters of that they meet. So. The reply speech from the East Speaker of the Side Opposition spent 3 minutes 30 seconds. Anyone who wants to hunt for a lion should be prepared to wear an iron vest. Because the candle had decided to take a combat posture because he has been informed that the person coming to his house is a good restaurant. With this, I call upon the side proposition to come and give us their reply speech. Well, now, the point in place of both things is to prove to you why or why shouldn't we ban, why, sh why or why shouldn't we ban foreign goods being given to developing countries, all in the aim of ending the problem of gender equality. And in today's debate, we side opposition believe that we did a better job than the side opposition in today's argument. And to this, we're going to show you reasons why we side opposition should stand over the side opposition in today's argument. The house, we gave you points that are actually workable in our society. This we fail to see coming from the side opposition. What are these points? We gave a point on principle of every revolution. What we told you that other means of punishment have actually been used on these countries based on other policies. And it didn't work. So therefore, why should it be try for us? To this, the side proposition, side opposition are yet to give us a concrete answer. Second, we brought to you the principle of sacrifice. They kept on saying and based this as the major line of argument that what is the use of stamping on rights of individuals what we can try other means. First of all, side the house, we gave you two major responses. First, we told you that based on the principle of sacrifice, that is 100 percent justifiable to step in on the rights of a group of individuals to save the rights of millions and billions of people to be born in the future. Now, the means of trying other ways of solving this problem is by diploma diploma diplomacy. The house, we told you earlier that many methods has actually been used by world heavy, that has actually been used by foreign countries to implement good policies in this developing country. They tried using specifically one thing, diplomacy. The house, to this, it never proved a solution. So we so the house, we start opposition as the standard that a point of revolution, the principle of revolution should is the standard strong in today's argument. The House, we side of proposition can base the argument of side opposition as flawed in today's debate. We brought to you real questions and to this they were only attacking our examples. This is to prove to you that we side proposition and reply speech are our point are standing strong in today's argument. Everything they brought about the rights of individuals were countered by the chief speaker, first of all, and the second of all, we told you about the principle of sacrifice. Second, they brought to you the options and the base this mainly that if you were to decide to give foreign aid, who will step them? The answer was truly a person what is speaker. When they brought to you the solution of social economic theory, which we believe, which we believe centers on two models, the rule and the rulers. To this, we answered every question coming from the side opposition, and to this, we side opposition believes our world is still standing in today's argument. The house, side opposition, based all the arguments and fallacies on lies. Now, according to the circles of what is speaker, he said that if we give Somalia instances, Insensitive as we use similar as a major point of argument that definitely gender equality will be stopped. But how? Do you know that Somalia are already giving gen are already giving insensitivities, but yet they still foster gender inequalities? The house, they put up the idea that organizations are behind organizations are behind Somalia in terms of development, right? But the question is, Somalia is still that that as a developing country in our today's world. So this means what the side provisions. The side provisions are the side provisions stand is standing in today's argument. A principle of revolution is stand, is standing, a principle of sacrifice, a principle of legitimacy. All that principle based on principle of right, based on principle of diplomacy, based on principle of who will be the rule and unruled. First, based on the principle of right, was answered by the chief speaker when he told about principle of sacrifice. Second, when they brought up the idea of 
of diplomacy. It was as if I just began when he told you that diplomacy was actually used in these developing countries in solar other problems and it didn't work. So why not to try first? Second, the brought of action of principles and of the rule and rule. This was totally as by the first of all this speaker when he brought to you the concept of the social economic tool. So the house, all our world is still standing, and that's all the side of which is flawed for today's debate. So the house, we gave you point that based on what is needed in the society, we gave you what couple of solutions on why this point which is stand in today's argument. And with this, we still have two major questions standing. First, we ask them that what is the use of giving these countries foreign aids if it's only benefited by one flow? To this, we're getting lazy analysis. Second, we ask them, they ask us the point of pre principle of pride, which we tag as the major aim and foundation of today's argument. We count on it by the principle of sacrifice. This is to prove one thing that all Hallow Seminary has no stand or St. Michael's anymore in today's argument. So all our policies are standing and all our policies have been defeated by the circles of support. So, so the way with this, we start proposition, I happy and proud of to propose today's argument based on the principles we gave, based on the principles, principles we can counter coming from the side of opposition. And to do this, and to this, we still remain St. Michael's model, compressive secondary school name. Then what fully proudly proposing today's argument. With this, let me go to That was the fight me from team proposition. And I'm coming. Thank God for the length of time he made this. The reply speech to the side of the proposition was four minutes. One second.